Hi guys, I thought I'd do a video for you lot, showing you some tips and tricks that making building a little bit easier. So first we're going to talk about grid size. Now grid size is really important, as you can see here on the right hand side of the menu. So there are three types of grid, there's a large grid, a medium grid and a small grid. Depending on what grid size you're using, you can see the cube moves differently and you can see the little squares on the ground which show you what kind of grid you're using as well. Grid size is really important, it's something that you really should um, pay attention to if you're watching a building tutorial. Especially in my videos, I do try to give you a little notification and so the grid um, icon on the side of the screen to help you guys out so you know exactly what grid I'm using for what items and how I'm placing them. Number two, structural items. Now these ones are a right pain so I'm just gonna um, try to do a slant roof. I'm just gonna level up a cube slightly lower than a wall and we're gonna get a horizontal plank. Now planks it's really important what grid size you're using. Here you can see I'm using a medium grid and it's actually much more easier to use a medium grid when you're placing planks. Another thing I want to point out that white dot shows you what kind of grid size I'm using so here I have a large grid then the medium grid and then I'll be using a small grid where the dot will be a lot smaller. So I'm going to carry on placing these planks. I'm going to start from the middle of the top plank and go right down to the middle of the bottom of the plank. But you can see the slight movement of a mouse will really determine how straight your planks are. So you really have to pay attention to this. And you will know they're straight, um, as you can see on the cube, the line is consistent, it's not uneven and the planks are straight as well. So I'm going to continue, I'm starting from the middle of the top plank, going right down to the middle of the bottom plank. Another thing you must know when you're trying to place planks and beams, if you're placing multiple planks, you have to make sure you're placing them all in the same way. So like I'm doing here, I'm placing from the middle of the top of the plank and I'm going down to the middle of the bottom of the plank. So if you keep these tips in mind, you should be fine. But however, sometimes you may be in a rush or whatever it is and sometimes your planks may not be as straight as they should be. So I'm going to show you here, because of my mouse, I've moved it slightly more forward. My planks, the last plank is not in line. So to cheat and to cover that, you can use just use a rod or any other item to cover it and no one will ever know. So I wouldn't really worry about it. As long as the surface of the planks looks smooth, then you can easily cover up the edges with any kind of structural item. And yeah, I know that is cheating, that is being a bit lazy, but that's life. <laughs> I'm sure you guys have lots of other things that you'd rather be getting on with than worrying about how straight your planks are. So here I'm just going to show you how to do a quick trim around this wall. So I'm using mid grid, I'm going from corner to corner, then I'm doing the opposite side. You have to place the planks in the same way on each side. Um, as you will see, I haven't and the planks are not straight but we're going to come to that in a moment. So here I'm just showing you how to place some bees. I'm using mid grid. It's just really easy when you use mid grid because it's like the mouse just automatically goes into place and you just take it along. But I am being a bit careless here, I'm just going along like it's really easy, but as you can see, the plank at the top is, sorry, the beam at the top is not straight, and that's probably because in the beginning I didn't place all of the beams on the edges correctly, everything has to be placed the same. So I have to make sure that my beam starts from the corner of this wall and to the corner of the other wall. And when I place in this side of the beam, I have to make sure I'm doing it exactly the same way on the other side. So I'm doing from the edge of that beam to the other edge. Now 
Now I have to correct some of these. I'm still in mid grid, um, and that's the best grid to use when you're when you want to do ceiling beams and these kind of things. These ones I have to do again because you can see they're not straight. And again, it's because of the slight movement of the mouse makes a difference. Just as long as you're placing all the beams exactly the same, you'll be fine. So that's what I'm doing here. I'm just making sure I'm just moving that mouse slightly up so they're all placed correctly. And you see, they're all in line perfectly straight and it's just as easy as that. I say it's as easy as that but you will get used to it. The more you build the more you understand. So we're just going to frame this cube here um, using a beam. I'm going into small grid to do this. I'm doing from corner to corner of that cube. Again at the bottom I'm doing exactly the same corner to corner and then I'll do the sides. So from the top of the edge of that beam to the bottom of the edge of the beam. And exactly the same on this side. And you should have a perfect frame. So number three is resizing object. When you're resizing, I recommend that you use small grid. Now sometimes when you're following a tutorial, I might start resizing a cube and I kind of click the button so that Bloxburg takes the money and then I will go back in and resize. So this is quite important when you're following a tutorial, just keep an eye on the price below at the bottom of the screen and resize exactly how I have. The tip number four is about adjustable items. Some items you have to press T to adjust the height of them. So here are just some items where you will have to press T to um, adjust the height. Especially when you're trying to put these items onto a cube or if you're using the um, decal hack, it's important that if you're using any of the items, you have to press T. So I'm going to show you how to do this um, doing this hack. So this hack um, is not mine. You can check out the original finder of this hack in the description below. Everything will be linked. We've just resized a wedge by $9 down. We've put on a horizontal plank. We're going to clone that. And then we're going to get a cube. Resize that. And we'll get a um, thin square beam and place that on the cube. Now I'm going to rotate this. Um, I've explained in another video how many times you should be rotating this. It depends on when your plot is. Um, please look at the video. It's linked below. So here I have to press T to place these. Otherwise it won't work. And by the way I'm placing it onto the rod not onto the cube. So number six is a floating hat. Again, please look at the original um, find of this hack in the description below. So the floating hack is basically, you can use sandboxes, but nowadays I think people use cubes. Get a cube, you place any kind of carpet and an item on top of that, and when you remove the cube and you remove the carpet, bam, you have a floating item. Now I really like this hat because you can do loads of different stuff. So here I'm just layering up um, a number of of um, pops. So just keep on resizing the cube, place the carpet, place the item on top and then remove the cube and remove the carpet at the end. I use this quite a lot. You can layer anything you want. And here I've done some mugs which are really cute. So we're going to talk about cloning, how to make builds movable. So here I've got a transparent cube. I'm going to put my pot on top. And if we get a placemat and place a transparent cube on top, you can see that everything will move. If you press C to clone, it will duplicate it. So you could, in fact, instead of the floating hat, if you wanted to move all of those pots, you could put them all on the transparent cube, put them onto a mat, and then everything will be clonable and you'll be able to move it wherever you want. So to clone items, the common item to use are cube and placemats. Um, you basically put your items on top and if you press C they will clone or if you want you can just pick up the mat and move them to whatever you want on your plot. Another way you can make clonable items are using these boxes. You can use cubes. I'm placing these two boxes. Make sure they're on the mat though. They have to be on the mat otherwise they will not be clonable. And I'm just going to place a rod from one box to the other. And then if we remove the boxes you will see that the rod is actually now stuck on the mat and if you press C you will see it's also clonable. So if you are making anything like this you just have to make sure that 
everything basically touches the mat at some point. So you can actually do this on a counter as well. I've placed my boxes. If I place my rod and get rid of the boxes, you will see the rod will now stick to the counter. Number eight is how to do easy custom items. I'm sure a lot of you know about this, but maybe there's a few beginners who don't know. It took me quite a while to actually find out how to do this. And it's all to do with grid size. To do this, you normally need to be in mid grid. You basically get an item and you use mid grid, you place it and then you clone it and rotate it once. And you keep on doing that until you make these um, brilliant custom items. So anyway guys, I really hope this this helped you out if there's anything else you want me to cover or go over just drop me um, a comment below and I'll definitely look at it and see what I can do and if you like this video you know what you got to do hit that like subscribe if you already haven't thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one